we're going to get started with our first lesson in Alice. Now, this is going to be a two-part lesson, Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Part 1, and Part 2. There's going to be two video lectures for you to go through before you're finished with this assignment. There's an accompanying worksheet for you to work on as we're going through these video lectures. So if you haven't opened up your worksheet yet, go ahead and do that. Put your name in the header. Save it into your student account so you're all ready. And then follow along, answer the questions as we go through these two video lectures. So you want to meet your instructors. Hopefully you know us already. You have Ms. Chaudhary in room 213 and Ms. Jones in room 204. We both teach computer science 2H and we're both ready to help you at any time if you have questions about Alice. So what we're going to learn in Computer Science 2H is an introductory programming course using the Alice programming language. You're going to learn some fundamentals in programming and specifically we're going to be doing it with animation, storytelling, and building short games. So we're going to have a good time where we learn these fundamentals of programming. That we're going to learn the basic building blocks that you use in pretty much any programming language. So we're going to talk about functions, procedures, methods. We're going to talk about classes. We're going to talk about if statements, loops, and parameters and arguments, all kinds of fun stuff. Now, if you want to do this at home, Alice is a free download. You can go to the website and you can download Alice. We're using Alice 3.1. Here in class, you're going to go to your start button, click on all programs, go to the Alice 3.1 folder, and you'll find the shortcut. It'll look like this. And that's how you can get into Alice every day in class. So before we begin the actual video part, let's just review some good tips on taking notes using a video lecture. So one of the great things about this is that you can go at your own pace. Sometimes when you're following a teacher, you're going at her pace. And you can maybe get a little bored or she's going too fast. So with this video lecture, you want to go at your own pace. You can stop or pause the video whenever you need to. Maybe you need to rewind it, listen to it two or three times, particularly if you're looking for an answer to a question. Maybe you need to fast forward a little bit. You know this information. So you can basically determine your own pace. Stop, review things whenever you need to so you can get the most out of each lecture. Go at your pace. But remember, don't skip anything. Everything here is going to be important in some way to help you build on your knowledge. So you can go back over these sections at any time. So even though we might be finished with Chapter 1, sometimes this information is good to review. So remember that these video lectures are always there. You can come back and review at any time. Some more tips for success when you're programming is you need to remember that these concepts are going to build on each other. So it's kind of like in a math class when you learn one thing and then you use it again the next chapter and you use it again the next chapter. It's going to be the same thing with programming, so you don't want to skip any assignments or any video lectures. It's always going to be here on the website, so even if you miss class, you don't have to miss anything important, any of the assignments or the lectures. Make sure you go over them on your own and that you don't skip anything. You want to stay caught up with your work. Since everything is going to build on each other, you really can't skip an assignment. It's going to have important concepts in it. And sometimes assignments in Chapter 3 or 4 might build on something you started in Chapters 1 or 2. So you don't want to skip any assignments. Make sure you're going in order and completing everything. You want to stay caught up. So if the class is going a little bit fast for you, you might need to come in for tutoring. Or if you miss class because you are sick, come in for help when you need it. Don't stop and, or give up or don't get behind. So you might want to, you don't want to say next week I'll catch up, next month I'll catch up. You know, you need to catch up right when you're getting behind. Don't, you know, let it snowball and get worse and worse and worse. And the main thing is don't give up. So we're going to be learning some new concepts in programming and sometimes it gets a little confusing and you might just say, well I can't get it. Well, we're going to go over these, uh, these new concepts again and again and again. So just keep trying. Don't give up. Eventually you'll get it. Now we're going to see a, a, another video written by the done by the Alice people. It's going to give you a brief tour of Alice. Now you might be familiar with some of this already because you took some time to get familiar with Alice. We're going to see the tour anyways and answer some of the questions on your worksheet. 
you can open up Alice and follow along with this video lecture and um, have a good time. The goal of this screencast is to provide an overview of the components in the code editor and the scene editor in the Alice Interactive Development Environment. The components are briefly described. However, later lessons will provide greater details and demonstration examples. Now, let's get started. First, make sure Alice 3 is running. When Alice first starts, the welcome dialog box will appear. This is where you will select a template for a project scene by a single click on one of the template thumbnail images and then clicking OK. It is also possible to select a template by simple double clicking the thumbnail image. There are many templates to choose from, but for this lesson, we will select the grass template. Upon selection of a template for the scene, Alice will display the scene in the upper left panel of the window, or the camera view. In Alice, the interface is a programming environment where a virtual world, or a scene with actors and props, and a program, or a script that gives instructions to the actors, can be created to enable interaction and communication between Alice and a programmer or user. In addition to displaying a view of the scene in the upper left, the opening interface displays the code editor panel to the right with tab panes where different parts of a program are created. The code editor also has a methods panel to the lower left and a control tiles panel to the lower right. When Alice is first started with a new template, the camera is the selected object. In the methods panel, each tile represents a method. A method is an action performed on or by an object, animal, person, prop, fish, or some other entity in a scene. Methods panel categorizes methods for display on two tabs. Procedures, which are methods that perform an action, and functions, which are methods that ask a question. In the control panel, each tile represents a statement that organizes and manages instructions and information or data. To switch over from the code editor to the scene editor, click the Setup Scene button in the lower right corner of the camera view panel, like this. We are now in the scene editor, which has two panels, the scene setup and the gallery. The purpose of the scene editor is to create a virtual world by adding and arranging the objects in a scene. The gallery contains collections of 3D models that are used to create objects for the scene. The setup panel provides buttons for positioning objects in the scene and changing the color, size, and other properties of the object in the scene. The creation of an animation often involves frequent switching back and forth between the code and scene editors. To toggle between the two editors, Click on the Setup Scene button in the Code Editor, or click the Edit Code button in the Scene Editor. This concludes the brief tour of the Alice 3 Interactive Development Environment. Further lessons will provide greater detail and demonstration examples to help you get a better understanding of each panel and their functions. This is the end of the first part of Lesson 1. So you can save your Word document, but you're not going to turn it in yet. You're going to go ahead and go to the second part of Lesson 1, and then keep working on your answers. And then at the end, that's when you'll have something ready to turn in.